This public service presentation is brought to you by your friends at Tri-County Rural Electric Cooperative in conjunction with Claverick Rural Electric Cooperative and the Pennsylvania Rural Electric Association. Now that we have your attention, I'd like to take the time to talk about high voltage electrical safety and the hazards associated with electricity. My name is John Likens. I'm the Director of Engineering Operations for Claverack and Tri-County Rural Electric Cooperatives. Assisting me today are Jim Griffith, Bucky Camburn, and Jim Altimus. Alignment's personal protective equipment consists of hard hat, safety glasses, and steel tip boots. They are also protected from the dangers of arc flash with flame resistant clothing. The lineman's primary source of protection are tested high voltage rubber sleeves, tested high voltage rubber gloves, tested rubber blankets, and tested rubber line hose. Linemen are further isolated from the hazards associated with high voltage electricity through the use of tested fiberglass sticks, such as a shotgun and a fiberglass switch stick. Every electrical distribution system is comprised of three major components. They are high voltage electrical conductors which transport electricity, insulators, which isolate high voltage from ground and electrical equipment such as transformers, cutouts, lightning arresters, and reclosers. There are many things that conduct electricity and cause outages on an electrical distribution system. Small animals such as birds and squirrels are often electrocuted when they bridge the gap between high voltage electrical wires and ground. Trees and tree branches also conduct electricity. When they come in contact with overhead energized conductors and bridge the gap to ground, they will also cause an outage. As you can see, kiln dried lumber also acts as a conductor. As is illustrated, the kiln dried piece of lumber acts as a conductor energizing the overhead transformer and lighting the light bulb. Cotton kite string is also an example of conductive material. While alignment's primary source of protection is their rubber gloves, electrocution can occur when the integrity of the rubber glove is compromised with holes and cracks. Contrary to popular belief, rubber boots contaminated with dirt, grease, and grime can also conduct electricity and cause electrocution. Even rubber car tires and bicycle tires can conduct electricity and cause electrocution to occur. Ladders, whether aluminum, fiberglass, or wood, also conduct electricity, ultimately leading to electrocution. The energy associated with high voltage electricity even has the power to dry out wet wood in a matter of seconds. Even for EMS and fire personnel, the other end of a fire hose is not a safe place to be. Following a vehicle accident involving poles and overhead wires, the safest place for you to remain is inside your vehicle. Do not attempt to exit your vehicle. The safest place for bystanders to remain is away from the vehicle. Do not allow them to approach your vehicle and ask them to call 911 for help. In this demonstration, we utilize a hot dog to illustrate what can occur to your finger if you come in contact with a vehicle that is energized from overhead down lines. This can result in serious injury or even death. Portable generators, such as this one, can pose a serious threat to our line workers when installed improperly. In this demonstration, a portable generator 
is improperly connected to the trailer. By this, we mean it is not connected to a double pole, double throw disconnect switch as required by the National Electric Code. As you can see, the portable generator is supplying power to a receptacle on the trailer, which represents any receptacle in a home. The illuminated light bulb represents the individual home being powered by the portable generator. Due to the fact that the generator is not properly connected, it is possible to backfeed the homeowner's distribution transformer and energize the high voltage distribution line serving the home and other homes attached to this line. The second illuminated light bulb on the trailer illustrates this case and represents a neighbor's home being powered by the portable generator. To further illustrate this dangerous situation, we utilize the amber beacon lights on the trailer to visually indicate that the primary line is hot. Please take notice that the amber beacon lights are indeed being powered by our portable generator. In conclusion, working with electricity should be left to professionals. Please remember the following key points. Treat all conductors as if they are energized. Keep a safe distance from down power lines or low lying power lines. Report all power problems as soon as possible. And call the one call system a minimum of three working...